Um, uh, so congratulations and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it's really wonderful to see you all in person and have the opportunity to put names and faces together. Um, I had the privilege and the, uh, the pleasure to review all of your application materials, every single one of them. And I feel like I know you to a certain degree, uh, your ambitions and uh, interests uh, so and achievements. But you know, nonetheless, I'm really looking forward to uh, get to know you in person and, you know, put that name and face together. Uh, my name is Kentaro Tsubaki. Um, I'm an associate professor of architecture here, been here since 2009, and a former associate dean for academics. Um, as you know, I'm the interim director. Um, last year, I returned to this administrative role to help out our transition into the, the new organizational structure to accommodate the growth that our school is experiencing. It's a good time to be here. Uh, although, <laughs> I got to say, we are in the uh, temporary, temporary uh, uh, structures uh, for uh, probably a little bit over a year or so, but after that, we'll have a brand spanking new, fully renovated Richard, uh, Richard Richard's Memorial Hall. Um, along with uh, Michael Kusanza, our graduate admissions director, I am committed to guide you through this admission cycle. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, you know, that's my goal. And yet, better yet, the new director of architecture who will be leading the program is here with us today. Emily, would you like to come up and say a couple few words? Hey everyone, it's so nice to see you all. My name is Emily Taylor Welty. Uh, I'm a professor of practice here and a leader firm in town. And I'm also, as Kentaro mentioned, stepping into the director role. So you'll hear more from me uh, as we talk about research studios and I'll be around at lunch to, to get to know you all and answer questions. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for coming. It's so great to see you. And we look forward to sharing more about our program and answering your questions. She has the rock star status in our faculty, just so you know. Just scour your social media posts and things like that. It will show up. Anyway, uh, so here's our uh, uh, plan for the day. Um, we'll uh, briefly go over how our curriculum is structured to engage students in their individual research interests, and then have a discussion with a few of our faculty who's leading some of the research projects, topics they are uh, uh, currently working on. And uh, lunch, and after that, uh, 2 p.m., the shuttle will leave right in front of our uh, 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 pavilion uh, in Q1 where you will be having lunch uh, uh, to go take a look at urban build projects in the small center projects. Uh, we'll go to the small center for collaborative design and back to the uptown campus. That's sort of the kind of a big picture uh, today. Okay, so the program overview, the uh, at Tulane School of Architecture, we aim to provide global leadership in New Orleans and around the world through excellence in design, research, and practice in the built environment. Our faculty and students will develop socially conscious and environmentally just models to inhabit the planet. I think you got the sense of this from Dean's uh, uh, talk this morning. This is our, in a way, vision statement. And to do this, we ask challenging questions and deliver meaningful responses through the lines of research concentrations you see here. Uh, river and coastal urbanism, climate change adaptation, design build, design and social engagement, 
building technologies and design, advanced fabrications and design, and representation theory. So, so you can kind of see this and think of it as our faculty's uh, area of expertise. We're a relatively small school. We don't claim that we do everything, but we are good at these things. So the question is, how do we introduce and integrate the research concentrations into the curriculum so you can be part of it in a meaningful way? As you see here, um, this is our uh, graduate ar architecture curriculum. Um, it is structured around the seven semester first professional master of architecture program. And it roughly breaks down into an introductory, core, and advanced levels. Two year track students with that man standing join us the program halfway through the core the year two, as you see there. And the, uh, the MS Art program is roughly equivalent to the final two semesters of the, the curriculum. The key here is that we complete almost all the NAB requirements um, necessary for uh, licensure, registration, licensure by the end of year two, spring, that see their NAV PC complete. And actually, if you check your other schools curriculum and not, not many schools do this, or not many schools are able to do it. By the time you finish the core, you will be operating at this level. Proficient in design, concepts, programs, representation, and tectonics. Infused with a very high level of technical competency. Architecture firm love our graduates because they can operate at the professional level from day one. And what this setup allows us to do is that as you see, the final two semesters is essentially filled with electives. See? highlighted in yellow, it's all electives essentially. And that, though, that space provides robust opportunities for students to individually forth, forge a path along the lines of these research concentrations through advanced seminars, research studios, and graduate thesis research and design sequence. We'll go over the, the, the graduate thesis uh, research, we'll go over this in details, but uh, just one thing, the, the graduate thesis is not necessarily a requirement, it's an option available to graduate students who really want to uh, pursue that route. And it's one-on-one, -on -one. you select the, the it's, it kind of goes both ways where, you select the faculty that your interest, your interests aligned and have the expertise, but you also the faculty has to select you in, in, in the other ways to 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 uh, support your uh, and agree to support your research because this is a serious business. Um, the topic of the research studios are probably a good example of what students and faculty are pursuing at the Tulane's of, uh, Tulane School of Architecture. And uh, we'll go over that uh, 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 briefly here.
So river and coastal urbanism concentrations. The Jaipur Research Studio led by Dean Aldi and Professor Virgupta explores building and public space typologies as part of a holistic urban strategies to restore the relationship of Jaipur with its geography, ecology, and natural resources. It's part of the larger Yamuna River project and a collaborative project with uh, UVA. The studio explores the question, how can architecture, urbanism, and landscape architecture contribute to create a new model for the built environment on one that is generated in relation to an, an awareness of water and urban ecology? Another river and coastal urbanism concentration uh, 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 field uh, the Addis Abeba Research Studio, led by Professor Garcia Rubio, who will be here to present uh, his research topic uh, in little details in a later uh, a session, um, aims to develop a holistic urban resilience and regenerative strategy where the main elements are 600 kilometers of river tributaries that weave through the city of Addis Abeba. The studio proposes a new ecological infrastructure that use, uses the river as the key element. And I must note here that the Jaipur studio and Addis Abeba studios are both uh, Mint's global research studio, uh, comes with uh, uh, funding for students and faculty to travel to the site of investigation. So you actually get to go to India to Ethiopia. We've done this two years ago at the starting point, uh, the last two years, as you know, uh, because of the uh, pandemic, uh, we've been operating remotely. We've still been doing this, but we have a connection uh, with the, the universities and governments on site and they will conduct a uh, Zoom uh, sort of field uh, uh, tra uh, tra trip and research, so to speak and uh, things are progressing, but we're very hopeful that this next academic year will be able to uh, travel again. Here, uh, the a Future of Port Studio led by Professor Joubert aims to drive university knowledge towards the public sphere and reinforce the debate about the future of the city of New Orleans. So this is more local focus, looking at the industrial canal and what we can do uh, 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 to revitalize and have, figure out a, a more productive use of that uh, particular area. Um, the hypothesis of the studio. All research studios all have hypothesis. We insist on it because we have to have uh, impactful research. It's not just some, you know, sort of uh, self-indulging uh, art practice here. The hypothesis of the studio is that architecture is a holistic discipline able to formalize, visualize, and offer large-scale transformations and long-term urban scenarios seeking urban equity, improved ecology and sustainable economy. Again, Margarita will be here to uh, uh, talk uh, more in details what she's up to later. Now we're getting to design build. Uh, the Urban Build Research Studio, it's probably one of the most uh, known initiatives uh, of our school. Uh, led by Professor Byron Mouton, has realized 16 prototype housing since 2005, 13 of which are located within the city, city's economically challenged central city neighborhood. 
and you'll have the opportunity to see some of the completed projects as well as the ongoing one uh, this afternoon. Um, I, I don't know if you all know, but the, the program students actually design in a fall semester, compete uh, amongst one, uh, one another actually to uh, develop five or six schemes and one gets selected, gets developed, go through the city permitting process. And in the spring semester, they go out and actually build them. They start with uh, digging uh, ditches for foundation <laughs> to pour concrete. Pretty much do everything except for some of the, uh, the, the, the trays where the licensing requires the electric, electric HVAC and uh, uh, one plumbing. And one other thing is uh, I think uh, he always have, fire and always have uh, someone professional do the drywall work because actually that requires a significant amount of time and uh, skills to do it right. So. Um, it's a very compact, as you know, you're actually building a, a single family or the, the duplex uh, family double. Uh, these are cl very cleverly designed. So actually two units most of the time or one half a unit where you can actually rent those things out to uh, help with the, the, the income. Um, um, you're building these things from scratch in three, four months. So as you see, time is premium, but they're very heroic in that regards. Uh, this year, the studio is exploring ways to grow the project scale, seeking higher impact in the community. They are engaged in a phase design and construction of a, a multi-unit housing typology. So we'll, we'll get to go see that. I haven't seen it yet. I'm quite excited. Uh, to go see what's they, what they're up to uh, uh, this afternoon. Okay, next, the small center uh, 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 center build research studio led by uh, uh, Professor Taylor Welty, design and fabricates project with partner organizations in New Orleans community, working closely with stakeholders, respond responding to the cultural, environmental, and material challenges. This is another really unique and very well known in the field uh, initiative we have. Um, Emily will be here today to tell you a lot more about this. And we also uh, will be visiting some of the completed projects as well as the, the small center for collaborative design in the, this afternoon tour. tour. The studio is based out of uh, Albert and Tina Small Center for Collaborative Design, our community engagement arm, and aims to foster innovative, innovative designs with public interest focus. Oops, sorry. Yep. Mass Timber Research Studio led by Professor Kennard explores the design potential of mass timber construction, which is both modern and ancient, sophisticated and elemental. The studio explores prototype design with cross laminated timber, an ecologically responsible alternative to the carbon intensive materials Expanding, exp expanding the regional economy and shifting away from extraction industry. So we're not just thinking about, you know, technology of application of new technologies. Um, we're kind of thinking about the industry as a whole and how we can push that industry by implementing these things, making these things more uh, accessible and, you know, but in turn changing the, the social dynamics or the, the eco eco dynamics in the economy, uh, regional economy. I mean, it's a pretty uh, ambitious goal, but that's, that's what um, uh, uh, our school is committed uh, uh, to and trying to project the, the vision so that 
uh, we have uh, people um, understanding that these things are possible. Professor Kennard, Judy Kennard is one of our most distinguished professor uh, here. She won't be here today. She's on sabbatical, but uh, she's ready to come back and uh, re-engage uh, 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 next, next academic year. All right. The Precast Concrete Research Studio, led by Professor Jones and I, explore the performative uh, potential of the complex surface geometry through advanced design and fabrication techniques. It gets a little wonky, but uh, you know we have a three-axis CNC machine, uh, uh, all the, the the digital suites that uh, 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 tools that uh, we can think of, and uh, we're trying to use the technology not just as a novelty but something impactful, in this case, relative to water. And as you know, and Richard probably talked about it this morning, I, uh, I'm kicking myself, I, couldn't, I wasn't be able to see his lecture uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we occupy the soft fluid grounds of Mississippi Delta. Finding stability is a constant challenge, especially from a construction perspective. So the hypothesis of the studio is that the surface geometry of the precast system can be performatively and aesthetically aligned to the flow characteristics of water, mitigating the productive occupation of the ground plane. Uh, Charles Jones will be here to uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, uh, our project here. And finally, a little bit about uh, uh, how the research concentrations are extended and challenged in the graduate thesis and thesis research and design sequence. The, the thesis research and design sequence essentially is a two semester. If you include the research method course that you will be taking in uh, uh, one, two, three, fourth uh, semester, uh, second year fall, it will be three, uh, you can think of it as a three semester sequence. Um, the, uh, the, in the uh, fall semester, you do a thesis research, and uh, in the spring semester, you do thesis design, and all led by one, maybe two uh, uh, instructors, uh, faculty members, and yourself meeting one-on-one. -on -one. It's, a, it's a little bit of a solitary act, but you really dig down to what you're interested in and trying to develop that into a, a serious uh, 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 academic paper, uh, thesis, what have you. Remember the university is here to generate knowledge and have impact. So the example of that here is, um, this is an MSR thesis actually by uh, uh, Professor Jones when he did his MSR here a couple of years ago, uh, who is with us as a research assistant professor this year, challenges the conventional notion of smooth street as a technical overcorrection. It proposes an alternative adaptive paving system and holistic street design strategy for the future. And this uh, paper, academic paper based on his thesis was recently accepted uh, at the uh, ACSA annual conference. It's a, quite a major achievement uh, for our program. Okay, and lastly, just want to mention a bit about the dual degree programs. Uh, the curriculum, again, this setup that the final two semesters are all electives. The curriculum setup also makes the dual degree possible. All the architecture electives will be substituted essentially by the required 
MSHP or MSRD courses, say, essentially shaving two semesters from the total number necessary to obtain the degrees independently. So it's a, it's a pretty good deal from that perspective. You do, however, you know, you can't do everything. So because you're kind of uh, 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 bridging off to uh, gain new knowledge uh, through preservation or sustainable real estate, you know, uh, you won't be exposed to architecture as much. I mean, it's related, but there's limits. And uh, um, these two things, uh, it, it does kind of limit your, how can I say, ability or the, the, uh, the time uh, to uh, pursue a thesis uh, sequence, unless you're, you know, you're really willing to work hard and manage time. Uh, but um, nonetheless, there are some, some of our graduates who pursued both architectural thesis and the, uh, the dual degrees uh, in the past, but it's hard. So how are we doing? Oh, we're doing pretty, pretty good. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So uh, for dual degree students, uh, uh, Cassius and Brent will be at lunch today uh, and will be very eager to talk to you if you want to uh, know things about their program. So feel free to uh, approach them um, over lunch. Okay, so that's what we have as an overview um, of our curriculum. And um, as we uh, get ready for the faculty research presentation, I'd be happy to entertain any questions you have so far. Questions? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, good question. So, the research concentration um, is uh, offered in the form of uh, research studio. And here, uh, it's kind of called in the, the old name, advanced studio electives. So, uh, in a three and a half year program, the first advanced studio elective opportunity is in second year fall. If you're an advanced standing student, the first semester, the first studio you would be taking is the, uh, the one of the research students. And then the, the second opportunity will be in the fall of the third year. And uh, in the spring, uh, the, the following spring, if you're not doing thesis, you'll be taking another research studio. If you're doing thesis, you'll be doing a thesis studio. Uh, uh, for that. Thank you. That's really helpful. Could you also explain to us what the students work with now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the interest of time, I didn't uh, pull in any uh, images for the, uh, the, the core, earlier core and introductory uh, uh, studio. So the summer sessions, uh, for a three and a half year program, the summer, we start out with the summer sessions, uh, very intense AD uh, uh, course, just solely focused on uh, general understanding of architecture and skill building. And these days it's the digital tools of, and having a good handle on digital tools are really uh, key. So uh, we'll get that uh, foundation in the summer. And uh, the fall uh, first year 
uh, first year fall architecture studios and actually uh, very focused on the idea of site. Um, but not necessarily in the urban sense, it's in a sense of kind of a geographical bio, uh, uh, sense, geographical sense. Uh, the studio, that studio in the first year fall uh, uh, actually goes out to see the, the Avery Island in uh, Mississippi. Huh? Uh, it's in Southern Louisiana. I haven't been there, but it's actually uh, uh, one of those uh, really interesting places that actually have a topography and the, the salt domes, old salt mine is underneath it. And I think there was an event where uh, the, the, it's, it's, the salt dome is over the lake, but there was a breach and the, the whole lake water got sucked into the dome and so on and so on. There's, it's quite a, a historical place. And uh, that's where uh, your project will be, uh, looking at topography, vegetation, landscape in relation to architecture. Um, the spring uh, uh, 6022 architecture, the second studio there, uh, is a about housing and uh, uh, Margarita Joubert actually hits that uh, the coordinates of the studio there, uh, but you are starting uh, from inside out essentially uh, from furniture human scale activity all the way to aggregated multi unit housing. City. The the sec and and as I said the uh, 6041 is the research studio, six, and then you go back to 6032, that is the, what we call an integrated studio. Uh, that's one, uh, one of the main uh, studio, all the, uh, uh, the uh, accreditation criteria comes into play and the scrutinize. That's the, probably the, the most, uh, how can I say, heavily scrutinized the uh, studio here, um, but essentially that studio is almost like uh, how we run a, a major project in the, the office. So we saw, saw some of these images uh, earlier. This kind of straightforward architecture, building, construction, but with some, some ideas and not just design ideas and contextual ideas, but uh, with uh, how do we integrate so sun, uh, facade uh, in, uh, in, from a thermal perspective, uh, construction, structure, uh, water management, I, it's one of the one of the key things that we're uh, 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 noticing these days uh, that we buildings have to be able to uh, manage water, rainwater, and use it productively. Detain them uh, uh, so it will over overrun our storm uh, storm drain system, so on and so forth. HVAC. Sorry, the the, the image is a little fu fuzzy there, but. Uh, um, all the, the key things that uh, we do need to look at. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. Well, well. So that's a good. Uh, so small center design build project is one semester design. And the, uh, so you can do it in the, the, the second year, uh, first uh, semester. Um, the urban bill is also, you can do it a la carte in a, in a, in a sense that the urban bill, the, the fall semester is designed primarily and the, the spring semester is the bill. So you can potentially engage uh, uh, the design semester in the second year fall and do the bill in uh, the, the third year spring. 
Oh, or you know, you can do a third year uh, of back to back, but that sort of eliminates the uh, the, uh, the possibility to repeat this too. So you have to kind of think about that twice. That's a good question. Emily, you want to talk to that? And you'll hear fire fire and then we present. Sure. I'll, I mean, I'll take on that one in a, a brief sense. The, the small center design builds, well, let me start with urban build. It's focused on residential design and construction. And so uh, integrating a lot of systems like mechanical, electrical, plumbing, along with a grand idea for the project and understanding how those systems layer together. Most of our small center projects are smaller in scale and, and smaller in complexity, which allows us to fit them in one semester. So we don't have to... Um, coordinate with all the different trades. We usually have minimal uh, electrical or plumbing in, in the project. So uh, lots of pavilions, uh, we did a skate park, we did you know, uh, play, a playground at a local transitional home for women and children. The projects that allow students to exercise their design muscles and learn how to build things yeah. without dealing with as complex of a permitting and uh, subs sort of schedule as urban build deals with. And so it's a little smaller in scale typically, uh, although you know a few of our projects like Grodot Youth Farm have, have been larger in size, but we try to make a one semester design build that allows particularly grad students to see a project from initial idea to completion in a 15 week semester, because we know that you guys have a lot of other things on your plate uh, curriculum wise. And so they're tailored to be a little bit smaller and a little bit more public access in nature than a, than a residential project. 